Let's start this video taking a look at the effects that this rather attractive device produces. It's the, one of the first items I've bought from Temu. It's quite nice, but before I can use it completely, I'd like to show you pointing down. If I do point it down, it falls apart, uh, which is going to be how we start this video. One moment, please. Yeah, this is how it arrived. It's obviously had a rough journey, quite an interesting construction. It does have a wooden base. It does have a handmade top, but as delivered, it's very rattly and wasn't working. So I applied some uh, isopropyl alcohol down this side here. I've just squirted more in, I think, and uh, liberated this off the hot melt glue to reveal that the motor and its circuit board and the little rotating pattern plastic have been hot melt glued in. The hot melt glue has not survived the journey, so that can be glued back in again. Perhaps there's something more appropriate. Wood to plastic, hot melt glue isn't ideal for that. However, here is the principle. If I plug this in, unfortunately it defaults to a standard setting whereby it rotates and it morphs through colours. And you can see a slight positive modulation flicker there. And it's a nice effect in its own right. It should even be visible on the bench. It's not going to be super bright under studio lighting. But this uh, rotating uh, pattern with these lenses, a sort of warp course of effect, is then amplified by this cube that sits over the top that is made of uh, more rippled plastic and it just gives a double ripple and it gives quite complicated effects. It's worth mentioning that it does come with a remote control so you can choose fixed colours that won't flicker. Uh, even full white shouldn't flicker, and that should be a good mix of red, green, blue, or just individual colours, and these ones may flicker. Not sure. Will they flicker? I'll just press a button and see. Not really flickering a lot. But you can choose multiple colours, just the usual thing. You've all seen these remote controls. It's interesting to note that this cube has been made by literally getting squares and gluing them together. They've used... Um, methylene chloride or something like that as the plastic solvent to physically just instantly join these together and you can tell that because it's got the telltale signs that in certain areas they've put on a bit too much and they've left streaks and it's done that thing that makes the plastic go mad it's not a terrible thing it's not terribly bad but it just kind of like uh it's very easy to mess up these things but it does suggest that a lot of effort went into making this particularly because uh it has to then fit into this machined groove over that and uh, fit snugly. I wonder how many don't fit. But uh, the wiring is very simple. You've got a USB cable come in with a switch on it, a little click on, click off switch. And then it just pushes in through a hole, it's glued in and that just goes onto the circuit board. So let's take a look at the, the circuit board. I'll zoom down on this a little bit. Temu, I should point out, are not a sponsor. I bought uh, several items from them to check out. They did actually ship them to Hell of Man and they were delivered via Royal Mail. All very good. So here's the circuit board. Microcontroller. Three transistors for red, green, blue. Some resistors for the LEDs. Um, and a infrared receiver. There's really not an awful lot here, is there? Okay. Let's take a closer look at this. I'll take a picture and we can reverse engineer it. One moment, please. Reverse engineering is complete. Let's explore. It's got some defects in the design, but that's okay. That can be addressed and you can hack the whole thing. You can get rid of the circuit board completely if you want to make it more useful. We have the supply coming on here and it loops straight out to the motor. We've got the microcontroller. We've got a high power LED. I say high power LED. It's basically a 50 50 package, um, but it's being, being run at high power. We've got an infrared receiver. We've got three MOSFETs and we've got three resistors 2.2 ohm for green and blue and 15 ohm for red. We've got a current limiting resistor, a, well, a sort of isolation resistor for the supply for the microcontroller and a 10 ohm resistor here for the uh, supply for the infrared receiver to decouple it just for noise reasons to separate it from all the noisy switching of the LEDs. What a shame that they're not actually isolated from that, but not to worry, it is what it is. That is what the circuit board looks like. Let's bring in the schematic. I left that running because it's quite attractive, just rotating on its own. It's a nice speed as well, even though it's running directly at five volts at a current of approximately 
30 milliamps. Let's zoom down this. We shall zoom down and we shall explore. In which case, I'll just get this out of the way then because it's not needed. I'll even turn it off. So here is the incoming 5 volt reel. I'll just draw that as really big pads because that's exactly what it is. It is great big pads. And that loops straight down to the motor, drawing 30 milliamps. There is a decoupling capacitor across that. I would not have put it there across the 5 volt reel. I'd put it somewhere else. The, there's a 10 ohm resistor decoupling the infrared from the 5 volt rail, the infrared receiver. To be honest, that's where I'd have put that capacitor. I'd have actually bridged that over to there and got rid of this track. So this capacitor would purely have been from here down to the 0 volt rail. Here is the 4.7 ohm decoupling uh, resistor and its capacitor for the microcontroller to provide a nice smooth supply decoupled from all that noise of the LEDs being switched, except, unfortunately, instead of taking the LEDs up to the 5 volt rail, they actually took it onto that microcontroller rail, which means that depending which LEDs are lit, it varies between about 3 and 5 volts. Um, the microcontroller then drives MOSFETs. I've not drawn the little arrows on. I shall draw the little arrows on right now. Uh, AO9T, otherwise known as AO3400, N channel MOSFETs, N, oh god, that wasn't an N, N chan. And there's the LEDs with their resistors. I didn't even colour them in the LEDs. That would have been nice if I'd coloured in the LEDs. Hold on. Let's colour in the LEDs. Red. This will just make it look nicer. Green. And blue. There we go. That's what it needed. Just that little finishing touch. So that's it. Uh, modifications I'd make. Uh, that capacitor would go to there. This track would be removed. Uh, this would be removed and that would be tied up to the 5 volt rail, providing a much more stable supply for the microcontroller. Um, and to be honest, the LEDs are being absolutely rammed with 130 milliamps for the red, 210 milliamps for the green, 200 milliamps for the blue. Not quite a watt, but then it is, it is only a 50-50 type chip. Uh, so what you could do to modify this, if you so desired, is get rid of the circuit board, put a bit of aluminium in its place and silicone onto the aluminium a high power LED of your choice in a single colour because it's quite annoying that every time you turn this on it starts with its little uh, transition through different colours. If you say for instance you just wanted this to be uh, blue for instance or a nice base warm white perhaps you could get a little aluminium plate in place of this uh, circuit board and you could put the LED, you could silicone it onto it, and then you could use a resistor and just have the 5 volts come in and a single resistor going across to that LED. And uh, that would let the LED, well, it would be cooled. You could run the LED theoretically at higher power. You could run it at full 350 milliamps of a 1 watt LED um, or higher, depending on heat sinking and your resistor at the side. And uh, that would give you a single color. Just as soon as you power it up, it starts and uh, does it stuff type of light. But there we have it. I mean, it's okay. It's quite nice that it's got that handmade feel to it, even if it had disintegrated on its way here. Oh, look at the flickering going on there. Let's make it green. I can actually point it right down now. Will I point it down and show you what it looks like? One moment, please. So this is what it looks like, projecting onto the ceiling with all the colors lit at once. And if you select a single colour, you get, obviously, just that mottled colour. If you choose a multicolour like this, you can choose different ratios. Um, you could choose blue, which is going to swamp out the camera, or green, which is quite nice, actually. It's a very relaxing colour. Or magenta, perhaps, if you want that psychedelic swirl. Uh, but that is it. It's not a bad effect. It's a very simple design, and to be honest, it's worth buying these. They're not that expensive from Temu, not a sponsor, and other sources. Um, and they're actually worth getting just for the motor and the disc, if anything else, And uh, because that uh, is the basis of quite an interesting custom effect. It's not bad at all. Very nice little unit.